to give this talk. And that's fine. I, I would like to I would like to join. Uh, I would like to thank organizers, of course, for uh, organizing this wonderful meeting. And I'm going to discuss about uh, demystifying black holes. <clears throat> certain activity that um, approach that I'm trying to develop for for some time. Um, so based on several papers, series of papers, but um, probably the, the the sort of self-contained picture and summary and uh, um, uh, the main, main main key points can be found here. There are other papers also in 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 in, in progress with my collaborators, uh, uh, and I will also discuss those. Okay, mm, I mean, do you see? So you see moving, right? The the the, the, the transparencies. Okay. Um, so this um, from uh, for a long time, I mean, black holes are considered to be uh, mysterious uh, because of uh, the way they <laughs> they uh, process uh, or, or store and process quantum information. And so there are basically two main uh, so-called mysteries of black holes uh, on which um, everybody agrees, and these are commonly accepted. Um, and um, so these are, um, and the others essentially follow from here. Um, so the, the first one is the, the area law of the entropy. And so black holes, uh, they carry a huge entropy, actually, by the, and, uh, and, and largely possible, as you will see, compatible with unitarity. But, uh, but it, it says a form of the area. The Bekenstein Hawking entropy um, is area and Planck units. And this is considered to be um, uh, mysterious. Uh, y area. And uh, the second mystery is that information. So you, you have these objects that store enormous amount of information because they have huge microstate entropy. And um, information is, is, is come, it takes very long time to come out. Uh, despite the fact that object radiates energy in form of Hawking radiation, uh, information takes very long time to come out. It's, everybody agrees on a scale, more or less everybody agrees on a scale, so-called time scale, so-called pages time, uh, which is the, with the, which is the, the, the lower bound um, of the time scale after which uh, a start uh, can, we can start resolving the information. Actually, actual, actual come out of information can take much longer, but this is the conservative sort of time scale, uh, more or less everybody agrees on. And it's already, this time scale is really mysterious because it's, is considered to be mysterious because, I mean, why this time and, uh, okay, and it's enormous. Why not earlier, for example, right? Okay, so uh, now the thing is when we are uh, encountering uh, some mysterious phenomena of nature, right, in, in general. Um, so there are two approaches, at least two approaches that we can take. Uh, one is to create a microscope. So let's say, uh, uh, let's take an example of, bucket of water. So there is the bucket of water and uh, you, you think it's a, it's, a, it's a mysterious substance and uh, it evaporates and so on. And the first approach is that you create a microscopic theory of this substance, a corpuscular theory. Uh, let's say water is made out of the molecules uh, and, and then you try to explain this phenomena uh, by this microscopic theory and then try to predict other things and, and test them. So now the, this approach to, to black hole or trying to create corpuscular theory, we have taken long ago, um, uh, quite long ago with my collaborator Cesar Gomez and I. And in this talk, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not touching that direction. So I'm distancing, I'm, I'm maximally distancing myself from, not just from a microscopic theory of, of the black hole, but from any uh, theory of the gravity or quantum gravity. Uh, I, instead, I will come, to this at the very end of the talk. Uh, why it will become obvious, but um, I will take the second approach, okay? So the second approach is that instead of creating a microscopic theory of a phenomena, in this, in this particular case, let's say water, you try to understand whether there is certain universality in, in, in underlying physics. So what you would try to do, you, you go and try to see if there are other substances which behave in a similar way, okay? And then you will discover that there are other substances which behave in a very similar way. Uh, and that demystifies your, the phenomena because now you understand that there is nothing special about water 
but there is some underlying more powerful uh, principle of nature, nature uh, which governs this, these dynamics. This is my this is the approach I will take to black holes to black holes. Okay. So what I will do, I will try to ask obvious questions. Um, the, 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 in fact, this question should have been asked very. We, we, we should have we should have asked these questions long ago. Um, so the, the obvious question is: Are black holes unique? Okay. In other words, I mean, are there other substances which have similar properties, uh, which have nothing to do with gravity? Okay. Uh, what are these properties? So, are there other substances that exhibit some area law entropy, uh, or the time scale uh, of information recovery that scales very much like page's time, uh, RQ, uh, with a certain fundamental scale f? And also, what is the nature of that scale f in, in other in other cases? Is there a universal meaning to this parameter f? And is gravity even essential? Okay. Again, these are obvious questions, and I think these are the right questions. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to ask. Okay, so my idea is that I will look for this phenomena, but my assumption is that these phenomena are more fundamental than gravity, okay, and more universal than gravity. And therefore, there is a, I, the first step is to look for some more powerful principle that can come from gravity or quantum gravity or whatever. Um, and this, this powerful principle is unitarity that we have in, in our current understanding of nature based on quantum theory. Uh, unitarity is the, is, the fundam is, is, the, is the most powerful fundamental principle, okay? So my guideline will be unitarity, not gravity. So, <clears throat> Therefore, so, and, and here is the structure. So this is the way I want to present my, my results. So first, what I did, I tried to formulate certain universal uh, bounds on entropy that, that come directly from unitarity, okay? Which, which have nothing to do with gravity and specifically do, have, have to do with unitarity of the theory. Um, and so there are two bounds. At the end of the day, they, they turn out to be usually saturated in, in, a, in a similar way, okay? Uh, but they, they, they are, they are, they are, the physical meanings are, are, are different. Um, so the first bound on entropy, perhaps it is the most striking one, is the following. Uh, so <clears throat> suppose you have an object uh, that has <clears throat> uh, large entropy, so large capacity of information storage. Um, then what is the, what is the offset and size, of course, there is some self-sustained object. Then the, 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 the bound says that the maximal entropy, that is the maximal microstate entropy that this object can have, is uh, its area uh, in the units of a Goldstone decay constant. Okay. Uh, so now uh, you can ask well, where is the Goldstone? All of a sudden, where is the Goldstone coming from? And actually, Goldstone is universal. All right. The reason is that any self-sustained object that can store quantum information necessarily breaks spontaneously Poincare symmetry. It also breaks usually spontaneously other symmetry, so I'll explain. But breaking of your Poincare symmetry is universal. So there universally there exists a Goldstone boson of spontaneously broken Poincare symmetry with a well-defined scale. So it's a well-defined scale F for arbitrary objects. So if you give me an object and it, 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 its parameters, the scale f is uniquely defined and the entropy is is is, is maximal entropy is the area in, the, in in those units okay in units of that scale um the usual now the important thing is that there are also other gold stones okay uh usually uh, actually i don't know any example where they are not now the way you can understand this is the following okay so suppose you have a generic some object which has high microstate entropy. Now, under the microstate entropy, I mean a very conservative definition of it. They are degenerate microstates and the logarithm out of the degenerate microstates, all pure. As you will see, this leads to thermality as it should, okay, at the end of the day, but all the states are pure, okay? So I'm just simply counting number of degenerate microstates. That's an invariant notion. Uh, now, um, 
So now suppose you have an <coughs> object that has this uh, degenerate micro microstates. Of course, they, they are, this means that they differ by some features which are microscopic, okay? Um, and so here, for example, pictorially, I, 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 I depict them in, in form of color. And so you have exponentially large number of those states. Now, the thing is that these states, because they are degenerate, um, the for the saturated objects that saturate this central bound, as I said, they, they are usually described as collective modes. They are collective Bogolubo or Goldstone modes. Okay. So that's why I'm saying uh, presence of Goldstone modes is generic on top of Poincare uh, Goldstone. Okay. I, I will give you examples. It, it would be pretty crystal clear uh, why <laughs> that is happening. Now, as I said, there is an alternative bound on entropy, which is actually not alternative, but it turns out that it's uh, whenever a system saturates, usually they, it saturates both. I, do, I, don't, I don't have any counter example when that doesn't happen. So uh, here is the uh, second bound is the following. Suppose again, you have a system which is self-sustained. So it gives you some self-sustained um, object with, with entropy. Uh, and the self sustainability, of course, can only happen in interacting system. All right. And there is some, always there is some relevant coupling, okay, Lo some of, of a long range interaction, which is relevant at that scale. Okay. Um, even if your original theory is a theory with a mass gap, there is a relevant interaction in the effect theory because of the Goldstone mode. But in general, there is a, or there's always a coupling constant alpha. And the, so the maximal entropy is the inverse coupling alpha. Uh, of course, alpha understood as a running coupling evaluated at the scale uh, of the object. Okay, so that's that's second entropy bound. Now, um, I will not give you all the arguments um, why of proof why these are entropy bounds. Um, in fact, I I mean there are so, so very clear physical arguments. Also, the examples that I, I will give you make it pretty tra transparent why these are the right bounds. Okay. But I want, I want to mention one very important thing. So the saturation of those bounds, okay, turns out to be in one-to-one -one correspondence with saturation of unitarity by a multi-particle scattering process in a theory, okay? So, multi, but, but a specific multi-particle scattering process when uh, the, the two particles go into many, okay? I mean, few to many, this type of processes uh, with, um, if occupation number of final state being inverse of the couple, okay? Now this point actually is a point of optimal truncation, okay? Because the, uh, the, the, um, the computation in terms of both perturbative and non-perturbative results agree there. Um, so the, basically the point is the following and you will understand immediately why this bound is, is imposed. So if we use this power of large N, we can observe that actually the, the scaling of the cross section in, in right units of a black disk, the, 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 the scaling of a cross section goes as this of this. So it's exponent in one over alpha, okay? And then there is an enhancement by the number of microstates that this n particle state can have. For example, number of different, different combina combinatorics in different colors or flavors and whatever. So then you see immediately why there is a unitarity, the absolute unitarity bound on entropy, which is given by one over the, the couple. Okay. Um, now you can also see the connection with Goldstone of broken Poincare invariants very nicely, because uh, indeed imagine that you have a scattering process in which you uh, saturate this one over alpha bound. Okay. And so you produce an n particle state. Uh, it's some kind of lump of the lump of the field, okay? So some n particle state, uh, and you can always you can you see immediately what the Goldstone decay constant is. And so that scales as square root of n times from the momentum transfer of the, that is relevant, which is inverse size of the system. And you can see immediately that once the system saturates one over alpha bound, it also the same entropy. Once the entropy becomes one over alpha, the same entropy is the area of this lump in the units of Goldstone decay constant of Goldstone of broken Poincare invariance, spontaneously broken Poincare symmetry. Okay, this is universal. Now, this, this discussion has nothing to do with gravity, it's universal. 
Okay, so now the finally I formulated a universal bound on a time scale of information retrieval from any such also the start of the information retrieval from any such system. Okay, so if you have such a system, there's a universal time scale of information retrieval which read, which has the following form: it's um, size of the system divided by this coupling. Okay, so now if you have a saturated system, this is what I'm assuming: the system saturates unitarity bound, so you, you you are creating a system. Which is maximal entropy compatible with unitarity of the theory. Um, so you can rewrite this bound in equivalent form. First of all, the minimal time scale is entropy times R, and it's also R cubed volume in units of uh, Gaussian decay constant. So the time scale of information retrieval scales as volume. So there is this universal feature. So it seems that there is a universal feature. Unitarity is telling us that. Maximal entropy the system can have is the area in the units of Boston decay constant, and max and the shortest time scale on which you can start retrieving information from this system is the volume in the same units in the same Boston decay constant. Okay, now we can do very quick cross check on black holes. And so for gravity, black holes break Poincare symmetry, obviously at the at Planck scale. Um, and this is very easy to see. And Goldstone is coming is a gravitational degree of freedom, obviously. So that's the decay constant. You know, that's the order parameter that breaks concurrent symmetry uh, spontaneously. Uh, and so the area of now, uh, if I evaluate the area in those units, I get exactly Bekenstein Hawking area, uh, Bekenstein Hawking entropy for a black hole. By the way, uh, actually, I, I try to say this over and over again, but Somehow, uh, it's not paid enough attention um, that the, the black hole entropy is also inverse of the gravitational coupling, evaluated at the scalar of, 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 of the black hole. So both bounds, both unitarity bounds are, it seems that black hole saturates both unitarity bounds. And then, I mean, of course, minimal information retrieval time uh, with according to this general time scale gives you pages time. All right. Okay, so now from here, as I said, I want to distance myself from, from gravity and from black holes and show that there are, there are infinite number of systems with, with, with same properties, at least a very long list. Um, and so what, what I've discovered and what, what we have seen in all the examples, all such systems, they behave as uh, black holes, literally, okay, without any exception. They have um, area low entropy. Once they saturate, in other words, once the system saturates bound of, on entropy imposed by unitarity, you push the system towards saturating the bound. Entropy becomes the area low in the units of Boston decay constant. Information retrieval time becomes uh, the volume in the same units, exactly as, as for a black hole. And, um, and, and uh, uh, if there is an information horizon uh, classically. Um, and so on, okay? Uh, they operate thermally and etc. So I will give you a couple of examples, okay? Um, so, the, so, so the first example, so I want to give you, so my, my task is that I want to only discuss things that are well known and well accepted. I don't want to bring some new speculative ideas because I want to give you facts. I'm trying to ask, Obvious questions that and and then give you the facts. Okay, so therefore I choose I chose systems that have um, I mean it's a, a standard uh, knowledge about them is, is is pretty good. Okay, so for example, first is QCD. So QCD with large number of colors, right? Um, and so uh, so n is number of colors and nf is the number of flavors, and this is a well studied theory. Okay. Uh, there is a coupling constant, uh, glue on inter interaction coupling constant alpha. Okay. And um, uh, we can define, uh, it's convenient to define so called uh, collective coupling, so called toast coupling, uh, in which we, we take a product, um, alpha times n. Um, and this is useful because we can take a useful limit, which uh, simplifies calculations enormously, in which um, um, alpha can be taken arbitrarily weak. So we are in a very nicely weak coupling domain. And uh, we keep uh, Toft coupling finite, and uh, in the, in this limit, QCD scale is finite. 
in this limit, what runs is top coupling, and this is scale is finite. Confinement scale is finite. So this theory is, 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 is pretty well understood. Um, anyway, I will use only factors that are well understood. Um, and it's confining, and there's a chiral symmetry breaking. Uh, far, uh, quarks form a condensate, they break chiral symmetry. And they are, uh, there's a huge number of Goldstone bosons. I mean, N square, uh, NF square Goldstone bosons, number of Goldstone bosons ions. All right. Now, so now we have UV theory and IR theory. So UV theory is theory of gluons and quarks. IR theory is theory of ions. They meet each other. They meet each other at the at the, at the QCD scale. Decay constant of ions um, is scales as square root of n. Okay. And correspondingly, coupling of ions scales as one over n. All right. Uh, very good. So now, I, in this theory, I want to choose my prototype, which, when I uh, saturate unitarity in, in the theory, that prototype behaves like a black hole. It saturates precisely entropy bounds, and it, it exhibits all the behavior like black holes do. So baryon is a natural candidate for it. Um, Q, large and QCD contains baryons. Baryons can be understood in two alternative languages. You, we can understand them from the point of view of UV theory. Uh, that those are bound states of quarks and quarks. Or we can also understand them beautifully from IR theory. And this has been brought thanks to works of Witten and others. Uh, we can understand it as a soliton of ions, a skirmion. Okay? The, the, the both descriptions are large n, are, uh, they match. Okay, so the properties of a baryon are extremely well understood. So the, the, the mass scales like n, the, the, the size, the radius scales like you see the scale, and alpha times n is one. And also alpha pi n times n is one at, this, at that scale. So now the novelty that I try to bring here is to view baryon as an as a, as a information storing device. Which is it is because the the baryon you we can give it an arbitrary it's a it's a macroscopic object okay in large increases it's a macroscopic object for example we can uh, its size and mass and everything are parameters which we can choose uh, arbitrarily so for example I, I can choose the, the the baryon mass to be um, baryon baryon size mass to be solar mass and uh, baryon size to be three kilometers okay um, and and it's a, it's a macroscopic object. And it has enormous entropy. And this is also new to think of baryon as an entropy carrying device. Why does it have entropy? Because it has enormous exponential large number of degenerate states, which, which differ by, by their flavor quantum numbers. OK? OK, so now I'm, now I'm taking log out of the degenerate states. And there is a very nice expression, very simple expression that you get. OK? Uh, it's a function of uh, Toft coupling for flavor. Which also Venetiano use that copy. So and others. Um, so now the thing is that the this entropy saturates unitarity bound for approximately um, an F or the one. Okay. And you can make it more precise, it's like 0.54 or something like that. Okay. By the way, the, the saturation point is extremely accurate. The because corrections are one over n suppressed to, to this saturation point. And um, at the saturation point where baryon saturates unitarity bound on entropy, you can see very nicely that the entropy of the baryon is area in units, measured in units of pi on decay constant. It, it, is, it also equals the one divided by pi on coupling and one divided by QCD coupling, as actually the two things match. It's just like a black hole. So the behavior of a baryon is just, just like a black hole. In a nice renormalizable, uh, quantum theory, uh, UV complete in a Wilsonian way. This is a theory which is asymptotically free. Uh, we know that. Now you can uh, try also, it's very nice how theory reinforces this bound because you, you can ask what happens if I try to push a further number of flavors further. So make logarithm, if, I, if, you, if you make a number of flavors large, logarithm will grow slowly, but it will grow. You cannot, because if you push an F much larger than one, your theory stops, stops to exist. Why? Because it becomes asymptotically non-free. So of course, it also will violate unitarity, but that's not possible. So theory is very smart. It responds by stopping existence. 
uh, so that's very nice. So as I said, I mean, virtually there is no aspect in terms of information storage in which you cannot match information storage properties of a black hole by the information storage properties of baryons in large MQCD. Okay, no, you give arbitrary numbers, you can see that you can match them very nicely. Okay. Now, now let's let's ask what is the time scale of information retrieval? Okay. Uh, now, of course, baryon, as I said, it carries enormous entropy, flavor entropy, and um, correspondingly, it's, it's, a, it's an information carrying device. And you can encode quantum information into a baryon through its flavor content. For example, and you can use baryon as a message. So, for example, Bob can send a message to Alice, uh, the message encoded in, in baryons. The question is how fast Alice can decode this message? And here, uh, the answer is very clear because everything is calculable. Uh, first, uh, so the, the, the answer is the, 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 the decoding of message takes precisely this time scale that I gave you, which for black hole would be phages time, but here is just entropy times the size of the, uh, the, size of the variant. Also, uh, something very important uh, is here, um, comes out here because you see, uh, Alice receives this uh, variant in form of a message. And uh, Alice knows that entropy scales like area. And so naively, Alice may think, if Alice knows nothing about large MQCD, uh, she may think that the, the, this entropy, the information is stored on the surface. But in reality, there are no modes that live on the surface. I mean, there are some modes that live on the surface, but the bulk of uh, flavor is, is stored in, in a bulk of baryon. The scaling of information, uh, amount of information, is like area, but it doesn't mean that actually in baryon someone lives on the area of the, of the baryon, on, on the surface of the baryon. Um, so that's that's very nice. And um, so the time scale is the same. By the way, it doesn't matter what device, uh, what uh, Alice will do uh, to decode the, for decoding this information, you know, because it's um, she can, for example, also prepare her own baryon, put the put anti baryon, put them together, and wait until the System decays and evaporates uh, slowly, and is the same the same time scale over and over again. Now, this this time scale that, that I gave you is just a bound. The actual time scale for decoding information can be much longer. All right. Now, um, there are other, many other examples, as I said. I, I I don't have time, of course, to to go through them. Uh, but actually, there's one very interesting example. Why? Because it has to do with real world. With real QCD, um, because in QCD there is this uh, so-called color glass condensate, a state, um, high occupation number state of gluons, it has been known for some time. Okay, thanks to these people, and um, and uh, so what? And recently, inspired by these ideas about entropy and etc. and in correspondence with black holes, uh, Raju Manugopal and myself, we we came, we we essentially gave uh, a discussion and arguments that. Uh, it is a saturated system. Okay, um, so it saturates these bounds on the entropy and therefore it behaves like a black hole from all, all the perspectives. So, so from the, and the entropy and uh, microstate entropy and information time retrieval and thermality and so on. And that's very exciting because that, that's something that has been uh, essentially is, is, is believed to, be, to, to, to have been observed in laboratory. Okay, so now finally, I want to discuss uh the um the the following so uh why is this approach useful to try to see if there is a universal phenomenon underlying this uh story with so-called mysteries so i hope by now i convinced you that these things uh, they demystify because they are exhibited by the normalizable uv complete theories but um and the, the great thing also is that now we are we have um, systems which exhibit very similar properties to black holes. We can study them, okay, and we can discover new phenomena, and then we can predict this new phenomena for black holes. Uh, there, there is again there is a list of phenomena which are pretty interesting. Um, I, I will talk about the first one, which is uh, which I call memory burden effect. Now this memory burden effect is very transparent physically actually, um, and here's the point. Imagine you have a system that is very efficient in storing quantum information. Okay, 
So now this by default means it basically let's say it saturates the bound on the on the unitarity on the information storage capacity. By default, this means that this system provides gapless modes. And the system is special because there are gapless modes in the bulk, in the interior, collective gapless modes, and there are no such modes in the in, in the in the outside of the, in the exterior. So there are no asymptotic states, not enough gapless asymptotic states uh, to carry the same amount of information. So therefore, the information encoded in the microstate of these memory modes, I call them memory modes, uh, is stored in the system and cannot be carried away by, by the outgoing modes because they, are, they, are, they have a high gap. So in other words, when if object decays, so now the question is what happens when the, the so let's say this object evaporates or decays. Now, if it decays really, this information storing in storing gapless modes has to be encoded now in outgoing uh, modes. Okay. But there are no carriers because precisely because of the initial fact that this, this system was special. It, it was it had a maximal entropy. So what happens is that inevitably the memory pattern, the quantum information pattern stored by the system back reacts, okay? And um, this, is the, this is the phenomenon of memory birth. So what happens is that in prototype systems that we know, we study, the memory burden effect stabilizes the system because of this, what I said, because there's, there are no carriers to take no, there are no gapless carriers to take same information outside because goldstone modes they live here but but not outside okay then this is this is this, this is the effect now let me illustrate this on a and i'll show you some movies i think i still have like five minutes or something right yeah i'll show you some movies some some okay not more i mean computer simulations so the a very nice prototype example is this Renormalizable theory with SUN global symmetry. So this theory has the generate uh, large number of degenerate vacuums, vacuum states. In some of those symmetries broken, and some some of those symmetries unbroken. So there is, let's say, there are two neighbor vacuum. Uh, I mean, there are two neighbor vacuum. You can you can check it, in which a symmetry is unbroken and is broken down to let's say uh, now SUN n minus one. Okay. So, for example, this is an adjoint field uh, that breaks this symmetry, and there are well-defined, well well-known number of Goldstone bosons in this in this vacuum. But there are no Goldstone bosons in this vacuum. Now, now I can create an information uh, storage device, large entropy device, as a, in form of a vacuum bubble of a broken symmetry vacuum embedded into an unbroken symmetry vacuum. Now, in, 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 in symbol approximation, you can even write down solution analytically, but solution always exists, even for small bubbles. Now, what is interesting about this, story, this, this system is that there are gapless goldstone modes inside of the bubble of order n, but there are no gapless goldstone modes. There are no gapless modes outside. Outside theory has a mass gap. Correspondingly, the, uh, the, 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 the pattern, the information pattern, carried by goldstone modes, uh, if emitted outside, would cost uh, a lot of energy. And so what happens is that information pattern back reacts and stabilizes the system. And we studied the system with students of mine, with uh, collaborators of mine in, in, here, uh, two graduate students, uh, Ole Kaikov and uh, Juan Sebastian Manuel Bermudez. Bermudez. Um, and uh, so we have some interesting um, some interesting movies i can let me let me show you movies um, share again okay, okay. I, hi this is todd page finally Finally, I got Zoom up. I just was stupidly had been working at home and I forgot I didn't have things set up on my office computer, but I had to use the office computer because I have to teach right afterwards. I forgot hey, that what? I have everything set up. But uh, anyway, are there, 
are there any questions? I don't know. Let's see. I guess I can check the. Uh, I don't. Chat I to see I'm not done yet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go, go ahead with the question. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, all right. So this is the uh, this is the this is the vacuum bubble. Um, okay. Uh, that would decay. Okay, so normally without information, without quantum information, you can see it, right, the decaying bubble. So without quantum information, the bubble would simply decay and, and disappear. But what happens is that uh, the quantum information through the memory burden stabilizes it, okay, as you can see very clearly. And in this movie, uh, you can see that also there is a uh, information horizon. Uh, because the perturbed uh, information carriers, this is like perturbed current information carrier, cannot get out. As you can see, there is a full-fledged horizon. Without any gravity or anything like that, there is an information horizon. Exactly the same behavior as, as black holes from the point of view of quantum information, okay? All right, so let me, let me share back the, let me share back the story. Okay, are there, are there other questions? Sorry, you, that, can you hear me? I just I had a new mic. Yes, Don. Yeah, okay. We started, late. We're late. we started late, so I still have, I, I have, still have to go on, okay? Oh, I see, it wasn't the end of the talk. Okay, sorry, sorry, I misunderstood. We I thought it was the end of the talk, I'm yeah, sorry. We were yeah, go ahead. That's right. Yeah, That's, okay, go on, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought that was. No, no, this is not a question session yet, yeah, sorry. Because we started late, sorry. Yeah, I'm going coming back, but I, I'm almost done. So, so therefore, um, this is the um, okay. So now this is the reason actually why black holes cannot emit. Of course, it's a, it's a natural conclusion that this is the reason why bubble cannot emit information, and also this is the, the, the same reason why black hole cannot emit information at the beginning of the of the operation process. Um, because, for example, if you want to, uh, let's say, if you take a 10 centimeter black hole and you, you store information of a picture of a cat, for instance, you can see that this, the, 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 this memory pattern uh, stored in a black hole is 68 orders of magnitude cheaper than it's stored outside. So, and um, so now the interesting thing, okay, until now I was giving you facts, and finally let me, let me, let me add some uh, further thoughts. Okay, now the further thoughts on this is that, okay, we didn't do this for real black holes, but in all the prototype systems, what we see is that the memory burden effect becomes uh, later, important latest by this time scale. Okay, R divided by alpha, which usually is like half decay time uh, for black hole will be pages time. Um, and then after that, the system gets to the slows down enormously the operation, pro, the, the decay process. You cannot no longer call it really an operation because the, the semi classics is 100% breaks down. Now, the question is is the, is, the, is the same thing, is the same thing happening for a black hole? Okay. So, one thing which is obvious because of this, because of this universality of the memory, memory burden effect is that by, by, by half decay, Semi-classical picture cannot be applicable for black hole. For sure, it breaks down. Memory burden has to be taken into account. Now, whether memory burden uh, really stabilizes the black hole, we don't know. But for sure, it breaks down self-similarity. The standard assumption that black holes elaborate self-similarly, so that they simply emit radiation and become smaller black holes, which are not, which are essentially the copies of the younger black holes. That is obviously cannot be. Uh, this is this is this is simply incompatible with with unitarity and, and with with the memory bar then effect. Okay, and uh, so this is this picture. I, I, there is no. I don't see any way what, how this picture can work. Which means that black hole operation at very quickly becomes no, not so similar. Okay, if we believe what if if we take these these general messages that I, I gave you, and um, so the. Um, the, the, there is a chance, so here's this analysis of this prototype system. So what you can do, you can write down a generic system which has all these properties of memory modes, memory burden, and, 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 and study it. And you see that 
in prototype studies, the system always gets stabilized, slows down later. And of course, this could be very interesting for black holes, uh, this implication, because uh, if black holes uh, looks like they, they live longer than what we thought. Um, and um, uh, in, OK, from there on, we have to make some guesswork. Uh, so if the lifetime is analytic in, in, in entropy, uh, then, for example, the, the, the black hole lives as S square. The lifetime is S square. Um, this is already very interesting from primordial black holes um, as dark matter candidates, for instance, because uh, black holes of 10 to the 8 gram, they can be perfectly around and, and could lead some interesting uh, uh, some interesting, uh, uh, I mean, uh, some interesting signatures, astrophysical, physical, and so on. But again, I want to separate very clearly the, 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 the guesswork from the facts. Okay, so I'm concluding here. So in this, what I try to tell you is that if we ask the right questions, in other words, the right question is, are black holes unique? Okay, are there other systems which have exactly the same, similar so-called properties that we thought for black holes were mysterious. Um, uh, so it turns out that there is, I have formulated two bounds of, on entropy coming from the unitarity, in particular from the unitarity of scattering amplitudes. Uh, in arbitrary theory, non-gravitational, I tried to distance myself from gravity. And uh, so, so, so the, the, all the systems, they have area law, in units of the Goldstone boson, or the decay constant of the Goldstone boson, or bro both broken Poincare symmetry and, uh, and other symmetries. And the time scale of information retrieval is given by, is proportional to the entropy, or actually proportional to the volume of the system in the units of the same Goldstone decay constant. Now, if you apply this to black holes, they reproduce what we know about black holes, precisely these properties that we think are mysterious. But these properties emerge in renormalizable quantum field theory. I mean, calculably, we see that they are there. So therefore, after all, uh, it, this looks like that these properties, uh, they have nothing to do with gravity. They are universal properties coming from unitarity uh, of the theory. And uh, so they are not specific to gravity. Um, and of course, and also this picture supports this, this story, uh, the, the, the picture of a black hole as some as saturated system of gravitons. Um, but again, I in the in, in the the whole my whole talk, I wanted to distance from from, from gravity or uh, gravitational part. Okay, so let me uh, stop here and thanks very much for the for listening. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks very much. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are there uh, are there any questions? I don't. Or rate. Let's see. Do I, wait a minute. I'm just seeing whether there's. Whether anybody's raised hands, I don't see raised hands. Oops, sorry, I don't mean to raise hand. Uh, I can't see raised hands, so maybe people just have to uh, speak, or maybe the organizers can. Yes, Chinji. Chinji. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the very nice. Hi. <laughs> right. So the wonderful talk. So the uh, yeah. So you convinced us that the uh, area row and the time scale are universal. And do you think that the holography is also universal or special for gravity? Um, so yeah, that, that's precisely the one of the things that, that I said. Uh, so again, okay. so this is a very important question because, <clears throat> as I said, um, I, I try to give you only facts, right? So I asked questions, and then I gave, gave you, found out reliably within the calculable domain of renormalizable quantum theories. And as I said, we see very clearly, there's no question about that, that uh, the, the area law, the, the, the entropy is the area law. It's always area law. The information retrieval time is, is the, the volume in, in this. Now, the fact that it's an area law, uh, of course, in, in case of a baryon, for instance, uh, now we can say, oh, baryons are holographic. But, but, but what, what, what's the meaning of that statement? What, what do we mean under that, right? Mm -hmm. If, if definition of holography simply means that the, the, the entropy scales like area, uh, sure, then we can say that, uh, the, that the holography is just simply a, a, a consequence of unitarity, has nothing to do with gravity, okay? Uh, now, if under holography we want to say more, we want to say that there are actual real localized degrees of freedom 
living on the surface of a baryon or any other object, for a baryon, that's certainly not the case. I mean, there are no, you can describe entropy. In other words, there is no need for that. In other words, we can perfectly nicely describe entropy of a baryon simply seeing what it is, okay? But of course, we can come up with alternative description, a bookkeeping, in which we can sort of say, okay, let me map baryon to some two dimensional theory in which these modes live on the surface. Uh, I don't, what I'm saying is that I don't see necessity of that. But also, in calculability, from calculability point of view, from calculability point of view, in the case of large MQCD, that doesn't really add anything. But uh, from the perspective of sort, sort of more philosophical and sort of trying to relate lower dimensional theories to high dimensional theories, certainly. So if, if that's the definition of holography, yes, then what I'm saying is that holography is generic. It comes from uh, unitarity. Uh, yeah, that's right. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there, are there any other questions? Okay, well, let's thank you again. And 